And I'm going to turn it up. Okay. We all know we're being recorded. Right? Um, then I'm going to turn it over to Eric to get into the meat of today and what, how we're going to deal with that. Um, have you been able to see your previous meeting notes? Does anybody make a motion to accept the previous meeting notes? Motion. So Who was that? That's Michael. Okay. Did you hear that? Uh, that was John, second. Okay, John seconded. I'm not on the screen yet, I'm trying to turn the camera on. Well, how about the agenda? I hope you have the agenda handy, but um, if we can approve the agenda, we have a motion to approve. That would be helpful. So I have a motion to approve the agenda. I'll second. I think everybody's fighting to get to their mute button. <laughs> Jessica, can you hear? You don't always, you don't record who moves things and, and who seconds it, do you? Can I you do. I, I think I got, I, I got Mr. Alero for motioning the minutes, Mr. Spencer for seconding the minutes. I missed who approved, vote motion to approve the agenda, but I got our second for um, Ms. Bell. Right? Nope. I, I motioned Amy. I you motioned unless Amy I didn't hear. No, okay. Gee, you're better than I am. I, I wouldn't have all that down. Um, so now we're kind of ready to go. Um there are a couple of two things that I wanted to bring up. Some of you have exp expressed you're not too happy to be here virtually. Um, the reason that I think it was a good idea, and I think uh we, some of the staff talked about it at the end of December is that in my neighborhood, it's like, it's all going around again. Oh. Neighbors on every side of me are getting COVID. Uh, they're not getting terribly sick if they're vaccinated and stuff, but even a little one-year-old with his parents, all they all three over Christmas got COVID. So we talked about just having two meetings virtual in January, because hopefully we'll be through the, the holiday spread. Um, and we can see how that goes, but uh, it's just trying to keep everybody healthy and not spread it around. Um, the other thing is that the public can hear what we're saying. Right, Eric? I don't know if they can see the screen. We are called panelists on this. So we are in a different category and the public can hear us, but we'll not be able to speak until we get to the end of the meeting when we have some time for some comments. So those are just the th few things I had and then turn it over to Eric to talk about the meat of the meeting. Yeah, so just to clarify, everybody uh, can see the screen. We're, gonna, we're all gonna look at the same thing and we're all gonna be able to hear the same as well. So um, uh, yeah, uh, so I'm gonna share my screen and kind of get this started. Okay, Let's see, sorry. Okay. Okay, so you all see the presentation. Okay, good. So just basic kind of stuff for Zoom. I know it's a quick refresher. Um, please, if you're not talking, please mute yourself. But if you wish to talk, uh, don't forget you're muted if you are muted. Um, the, the chat icon, you can communicate with host and co-host. Uh, the raise hand feature, um, if, if you have something you want to say, feel free to use that. Um, and then again, uh, we are recording this meeting at the, uh, for the public to view and to post this on our hub site uh, after this meeting. Um, and so as Anna already mentioned, tonight is basically, uh, it's very simple in the agenda terms, but it's gonna be a little more complicated once we get in because this is a discussion of uh, the strategies and recommendations. Um, so I anticipate a lot of good conversation tonight, a productive conversation. Um, and tonight we are going to be discussing um, the 18 recommendations that you guys reviewed that do not have consensus. Everything that uh, you have there, when you guys did the Survey Monkey, you guys filled out uh, your your level of of like or dislike towards certain strategies and recommendations. Um, the ones you see tonight do not have two thirds uh, consensus, uh, as stated in the charter. As stated in the charter. So tonight, the idea is to kind of have a conversation and work to see what's missing to see if consensus can be reached on these remaining 18 regarding housing and transportation. Um, 
so in talking about consensus, the consensus continuum, um, this is just something that I think we need to just kind of touch base one, one more time before we kind of really start these conversations. Uh, we're not, uh, so ideally in a perfect world, everybody would, would like everything, right? It's 100% full agree, let's move forward. Or 100%, no, this is not good for the community. Let's not do this. But here, this is kind of what the consensus is going to consensus continuum is. We ideally, we're trying to get to everybody to at least be able to to uh, like this and to be able to move on. So you may you may have some disagreements with it, but can can you overall live with it or like it um, to put this into the plan and support it in the plan? Um, so if there's any if there's there, if there's any questions about this, this is kind of a again just a recap of something we've talked about a year ago prior to all this starting. Um, again, so one other big thing tonight is when we go through these 18, um, we have two hours, right? And I want to I want to be respectful of everybody's time because uh, we're here. You guys are here voluntarily, right? This is this is a position you guys have signed up for. Um, so what I what I plan on doing tonight is when we when we show each each recommendation on the screen, well, I, I want to start a five minute countdown kind of thing. Uh, after those five minutes are up, we can determine if more conversation is needed, or if a consensus is reached, or if it's not going to be able to reach a consensus at all. Um, and if we want to continue a conversation, we can continue for a couple more minutes and then revisit that situation. Um, if we do five minutes for each recommendation, that's ninety minutes. That's an hour and a half. So uh, I, I want to do our best to stay on track as much as possible. Uh, please prov provide productive comments um, and uh, give your opinions and feedback in a, in a productive manner, uh, just so we can stay on track and, and move forward um, as best as possible. Um, and so if, if we come across a recommendation tonight that, that you're kind of on the fence with, really the, the key question really is what elements are missing for you to really like this? What elements do you think are missing to gain a consensus for the, from the group? That's the question we're kind of after here, especially some of the ones where uh, you'll see early on um, are at the 64% mark. So we're like right there. We're almost at a 67% mark of consensus. So what's missing? Something is missing. Um, so the point is of all this to have, have a conversation to hammer that out. Um, and again, finally, one other thing too is when we sent these recommendations out, uh, we had 14 of the 15 members respond. So we had a high percentage of responses, a response rate. And I want to say thank you guys so much for that. That has made um, this process so much easier. And we really appreciate that. And please, please do so. Uh, please respond again on the, the second batch that we just sent out on Friday. There are a lot more, but hopefully they're less. Uh, controversial, right? It, it's not the housing and transportation. It's more of an environment um, uh, and, and that kind of stuff. So uh, thank you again for your participation and please just uh, take some time the next week or two so we can have this meeting again on the 23rd uh, and kind of go right through that as well. So um, without further ado, I will begin sharing the first recommendation we have. You, can you all see that, Jesse? Is that good? Can you see the first? Okay, perfect. Okay, so the first recommendation we have on the screen is uh, to, the recommendation states, invest in multimodal transit improvements in region four, specifically along Ritchie Highway, Mountain Road, College Parkway, and near Anne Arundel Community College. 64% um, of the SAC uh, can back this, is comfortable moving forward with this, but we're not quite at that two-thirds consensus yet. So I, um, I'd like to give this to Anne, and Anne, you can open up the floor, you can start your comments, and um, begin the conversation. And I'll start the five-minute countdown. Okay, the, the floor is open, and and um, somebody needs to tell us what could make, what's missing here, or what you'd like to talk about, about this particular strategy. I know John, from reading some of your comments, this probably you think is maybe 10 years off, even if then. Is John on? Is, can people hear me? <laughs> I can hear you, Ann. yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, I can't hear myself. Okay, I'm sorry, I was mooted as usual. 
<laughs> slap my wrist. Okay. Uh, the plan planning process at where we are right now is strictly a list of what we want to do. It has no prioritization. It has no dollars associated with it. So uh, my, I can agree with the concept. I'm not going to try and apply dollars to this particular thing at this time. But transit is really suffering right now, to say the least. But I, I can live with this one. Uh, I see Steve's hand. Yes. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes. Perfect. Great. Sometimes I have issues with uh, bandwidth, and so I dial in on iPhone. If I start getting scrambled, let me know, and that's what I'll end up doing. Will do. So I, I think that this uh, is a good place to ask the question about the functional plans, because uh, the functional plans, like Move uh, Rundle, uh, ends up having a lot of potential fixes uh, that would cover kind of what this particular strategy is. And so the question really is, are we going to be endorsing some of those strategies for our particular region? Uh, it was a very broad question, uh, but it, like I said, the functional plan, and to some extent also uh, the walk and roll plan, uh, has got uh, solutions already in there. And so I figured that we would just be endorsing some of those. So let's talk about the functionality of, the, of this plan. And I think the, the idea for this recommendation or strategy was basically to support the move around, right? To end the walk and roll plan. Um, just to uh, specifically focus in on certain areas of Region 4 and, and say Region 4 plan uh, wants these things um, in these certain areas, right? And even if that's being said in an OOT plan, this is, this is you know, a, an extension of the GDP and or an amendment to the GDP while other plans are kind of extensions, right? So essentially, we're trying to just say we 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 as Region Four encourage and support these efforts to reach this goal or this strategy. Emma, that you've explained it that way, I'm I'm more comfortable with it. I um, and it's not that I'm uncomfortable with this. Generally speaking, I'm like with John. I I am fine with it. I just and if I'm misreading the room on this. I'm sorry, um, but if anyone else was thinking like about transit generally and transportation in the county generally, like I was thinking, I think I was trying to like build it up of like we had to make it like a fully functional system and maybe that's an expectation we were putting too much upon ourselves and as, as John said um, and has said many times like it's it's far off and um, maybe just not so much like wanting to put a hold on this or anything like that, because I think generally speaking, yes, we do want to move towards multi multimodal transit improvements, um, but just maybe being kind with ourselves and not putting too much pressure on ourselves to make it like the greatest in the country immediately. <laughs> So yeah, so I think along that note, this is the, these some of these recommendations uh, I think can be cleared up because it's, it's simply supporting other agencies' efforts to gain um, improvements in certain areas, and those certain areas being region four. And we've called out major thoroughfares in this strategy, kind of thing. How's our time? Four twenty. So if we we can take a we we can kind of. We can kind of, if you want, if you we can, and if you would like, we can say raise your hand if you believe this has consensus, or if you, and if you don't, we can kind of move forward from there and and see. Okay, can people raise their hand if they now feel more comfortable with this, and we can come to consensus, or do we need to talk a little bit more? Um, I'm uh, looking for my hand on this thing. Oh, there it is. Oops. I'm raising my hand. I can't. Find I can't it. find my hand either. So I'm yeah, raising. I, I can't find my hand either. But yeah. um, or I guess what we could say is: Does anybody not believe this is a good strategy, and there's stuff that needs to be worked out on it? Does Does anybody believe uh, further conversation is required? No. Eric. FYI, anybody looking for raise your hand? It's under reactions. Oh, under reactions. Oh, okay. Yeah. Eric is Tom Hampton. Um, I. My, I guess my comment about this and anything else would be I was an accountant for 40 years and without having some knowledge of 
you know, what kind of cost this really is to the county. Um, I, you know, I certainly don't expect any details, but um, it's hard for me to say, gee, I can support this because I don't have a clue what it's going to cost us. <laughs> well, and if I could, Tom, that was kind of, you know, my comment is that we had a really difficult time identifying when we were discussing this. Um, what we what we would propose is an improvement. And to Emma's point, I get it. That's not really what we're doing. Uh, we're not coming up with the plan. But um, but uh, so Tom, I kind of agree with you that it. And for me, it's a little thin on um, identifying the particulars as to what we should be investing in. But I support that concept that it should be easier to get around without relying upon a car. I can agree with that as well. Yeah. yeah. Any more comments or will we finish with this? Um, real quickly, I um, please don't take my no vote as a no vote or as a yes vote. I am putting the kids to bed right now. So um, <laughs> it would be helpful if like, I don't want it recorded that I'm okay with this because I don't think I'm okay with this at this point. Um, <laughs> but I'm not able to raise my hand or what, or show that I'm not okay with it. So. Um, it would be more helpful if there was an action that you had to do versus an action that you didn't have to do, if that makes sense. What, to be against something? You, you... Yeah, yeah, because I'm not going to be able to raise my hand. I don't know. I, I, I just need like five more minutes, and then I'll have them in bed. But um, I am not comfortable going to, going forward with this yet. And then, and then, yeah, let me put her to bed. Okay. Um... I, uh, this is a decision we have to make. <clears throat> Should we go ahead and put it, go ahead with the vote or wait for the vote and talk when Holly comes back? What do people want to do? Alternatively, we can also move to the next one and come back to this. Right, 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 right. We don't have to take a vote. We can move on. Well, let's just do that then. Okay. Before we go to the next one, can I ask a quick question? It kind of this question kind of made me think about it, but in a lot of my when I was going through the, the the survey, a lot of times I was confused about where the monetary part of this gets framed into this because from a oh I think this is a great idea, but from a if we're going to have funding for it and and how am I supposed to be relating the idea that we're putting forth in respect to money and how it's funded because that's where I, I've had some issues as well. So again, the, this these this recommendation is essentially, and maybe what we can do is reframe and revise the, what this strategy says. But this strategy essentially is says, we're, we as region four SAC are not gonna do any, any, any specific analysis that we need exactly this addition at this exact location and in this strategy. But what we what this strategy is saying is that when OOT has created a plan, such as the walk and roll, or such as the uh, uh, any other any other kind of plan that they create, we support that and those ideas on for Region Four along Mountain Road, College Parkway, et cetera. So maybe something we could say is uh, at the end of this is um, add. Um, invest in multimodal improvements in region four along these areas as stated in different plans created by OOT or something along those lines. Would, would inherently, if we're in support of something that comes goes down the pike, doesn't that mean we'd we be in support of looking for funding for it? So does it actually have to specify in all of these that we would support looking for funding? Yeah, I mean, we have some funding recommendations that, that are going to be discussed tonight as well. Um, but um, for the most part, when it comes to implementation, each each plan created has their own implementation uh, aspect, right? Uh, and there's an implementation matrix, and sometimes there's implementation committees. But th this isn't talking necessarily about any of that. This is just saying overall, Region Four, we we as Region Four uh, recommend when there are improvements to be along these areas. Eric? Hey, John? John Spencer. Yeah, just one quick edit and then a comment. 
but invest in multimodal transit. Transit is a mode, so it should say invest in multimodal mm -hmm. transportation improvements. So it also include bikeways or sidewalks as well. So just that one word change. And then the other thing is just in terms of the future, I mean, we're never really going to set priorities as until we have dollar amounts. So I'm okay with promising all kinds of things. <laughs> uh, Christina, your hand. Hi, Christina Pompa with the Office of Planning and Zoning. I just wanna, a number of you have made comments about <clears throat> funding. Um, you all are looking at what you think the goals are for your region. Everything that you lay out in the plan that goes to the county council will then obviously get vetted through the county council. They may not end up taking all the recommendations. They may revise some of them. But ultimately, the funding for these things happens through either our capital budget or our operating budget, which is also adopted by the county council. Typically, we do not put funding plans into, into these kind of plans, and I really don't want people to get hung up on them. What you are saying in this plan is these are priorities for us. And every time we have a plan adopted that says these are our priorities, it actually helps things get funded at the county council. I also should qualify and say not everything that gets recommended in a plan will get funded, but it is the wish list and we keep planning for the things we need. Thank you. I think that was helpful. Thank you. So can we move on to the next one, Eric? Sure. Okay, so the next one, uh, next recommendation we have is um, for a plan for a countywide network of electric vehicle charging infrastructure, create standards for requiring EV charging stations and, and amend zoning ordinance to require EV in infrastructure for mixed use, medium to high density residential projects and certain commercial uses. Specify requirements for setbacks, landscaping, and location, as well as develop a program to prioritize locations for installation of EV infrastructure in public spaces. And finally, seek funding opportunities for their deployment. This could include county fleet operations, EV water vehicles, e-bikes, and private single occupancy vehicles. How do people, what do people think about this? I thought this was already in the plan 2040, essentially, a network of EV charging stations. It's already underway, isn't it? Yes, there, I believe there were some uh, recommendations or, or uh, strategies towards that, but I think this goes a little bit deeper when you talk a little bit about um, uh, wanting to find, to step up and, and prioritize certain, develop a program to prioritize locations and the funding opportunities as well. And Melissa? Um, I just think this is going to be an issue for like townhomes. And um, so I don't know, like, is this for separate standalone charging stations? I don't know if those kind of specifics are something we're talking about, but um, or is it something like if a builder builds townhomes, then they would be required to put charging stations into their you know development or i guess i don't really totally understand what and maybe that doesn't matter i don't know no i think that's a valid point um and with this we, we it would be some creating some type of standard uh that the that would eventually be hopefully amended by or adopted by code to reflect requirements based on um uh, density or size of buildings, et cetera. So it, it, would, it would kind of fit along those lines. Uh, Michael? I think I'm generally fine with this. I'm wondering if instead of requiring it, I'm not sure how EV adoption will change over time, but maybe incentivizing instead of requiring initially and as adoption because i mean if you drive around i'm not sure how many ev charging stations are utilized so if, if we we have a bunch of them in new developments and they're not the adoption rate of ev 
VVs is not there yet. I'm wondering if we're, I mean, hey, maybe it's, it, it may not be a bad thing to get ahead of it, but maybe starting out incentivizing rather than requiring. Okay. Uh, Lorenzo, if you want to make that note. Um, that's, thanks, Michael. Um, Holly? Um, sir, again. Okay. Oh. Go ahead, Holly. So, sorry. No, go ahead, Holly. Um, so uh, based on the last subject, I kind of get the feeling that funding will be based on where we prioritize things. Um, and while I do think it would be good to have this kind of infrastructure, I don't think the technology is there yet to have it. Um, just because me personally, I would love to have an electric minivan, but they're just not there yet. I'm hoping in the next five to 10 years, I'll have one at a reasonable cost. But it's not there yet. So if I were to set this as a priority, that wouldn't make sense. There are a lot of other things in this plan that I would prioritize over this. So I wonder if it would be, I don't know, if we could just kind of look through if, what, what would be the best course of action for looking through these things and putting together our wish list based on priorities. Because if we go through one by one, then I'm not sure it's going to capture exactly how we feel about the subject or the recommendation um, if it's just done one by one instead of looking at it as a whole or is that something we might do later on at a meeting where we put to look at these things as a whole and say okay this one's really important this one can wait stuff like that yeah so this 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 conversation is just to see if we can live with this recommendation uh, prioritization will come later and there will be an opportunity for the all sac to review all all of the all of the recommendations that have consensus in one shot right so this is just to kind of hammer out some the, the some concepts um and then two as, as everybody knows um that this this is for a plan for the next you know 20 years so this is this is uh, it, it may not be super um applicable today but maybe, like you said, five years from now, it, this could this could be a lot more impactful then than it is today. Um, uh, Tom? Yeah, um, Tom Hampton. I, I have um, something of a unique position and I worked for more than 15 years in the oil and gas industry. And I also worked for about 10 years in, uh, well, actually more of the nuclear power industry. But still, there's <laughs> there's something about this that that to me, um, I realize that in California they're making a big push to go and even um, essentially ban the sales of gasoline cars. But um, I cannot see the oil industry in this country giving up and petering out over the course of the next twenty years. Um, and so I honestly believe that while hybrid vehicles and better hybrid vehicles are are a wonderful thing, uh, I, I don't believe that investing in a large um, electric vehicle charging network is a wise thing to do over the course of the next 10 to 20 years. Thank you, Tom. Uh, I, have and... a I have a question, Eric. Um, I know that the new Bush Library um, is has, I don't know, three or four uh, electric charging stations. Is it a county policy on new building to have <clears throat> electric charging stations? I will have to confirm if there's anything in the code, but uh, I, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, could, I, could I jump back in there real quick? Sure. Well, um, go ahead. And in terms of like, when I first read this, I thought, if this is for county vehicles, this is a good idea. If it's for specific segments of things, I think it's a good idea. But to think that we might be putting electric car charging stations around the county uh, for them to be used by the public, I think that's pretty far off and not a good idea. So, Tom, what I'm hearing from you is if if this was a focus on county fleet vehicles, you'd be more comfortable with this. I, I'd be in support of it. Yes. Okay. Um, on the, okay. Thank you. Uh, on that note, Anne, that is the five minute. Oh, but we, I do see a couple more hands. So what? Well, let's ahead. take a couple more hands, but okay. but we need to to get some consensus, and we didn't vote on the other one yet either, right? Correct. So, uh, Ke Kevin. 
Thanks, Eric. Kevin Haynes. I'm just going to second Michael's earlier comment about um, changing the A to more of an incentive and possibly an exploration exercise instead of a requirement. I'll just leave my comments at that. Thanks, uh, Steve. Yeah, I would uh, piggyback again on what Tom was saying and some others that uh, I'm more in favor of this being restricted to a county initiative. If as I take a look at an HOA, we've already been looking at what it would cost us not just to acquire, but also to maintain these charging stations. You know, we don't have to worry about people running to the gas station right now. All of that infrastructure and everything belongs to somebody else. We're very reluctant right now to create our own in infrastructure. Thanks, Steve. Uh, John? Uh, I guess when I look at it, the first word is planned for. It's not actually build. It's not to do. So <laughs> I'm comfortable with that. Uh, I don't have a problem with planning to do a network. Uh, I raise an issue I think several have touched on already is, is, is this being done for private or public, or is it being done by private or public? Who, who would be fund? Is this the county that would fund this, or will developers be expected to fund this? I don't think we know that. Can we know that now? It seems like now it wouldn't be much of an incentive if you had your apartment and you said we have electric vehicle charging stations. But maybe five years from now, that would be worth the developer developing that. I don't know. But um, we can't know it all because it is still going to have to be fairly complex. In the chat, it looks like we've got a couple other comments um, agreeing with a focus on county owned properties uh, for this strategy. Um, and I see Christina's hand up. Hi, Christina Pompa with the Office of Planning and Zoning. Uh, oh my goodness, I just hit the wrong thing. I'm sorry, I have a thumb up. I didn't mean that thumbs up. Anyway, <laughs> um, I was trying to get my hand to go down. On this A option, create standards for requiring EV charging stations and amend the zoning ordinance to require EV infrastructure for mixed use, medium to high density residential projects and certain com commercial uses. This is specifically adding a require, recommending adding a requirement to the zoning ordinance that would require electric vehicle infrastructure for certain kinds of projects. So if you were going to be doing, let's say, a mixed use project somewhere in your parking, you would need to offer EV infrastructure. Now, all of that would have to be hammered out through exploration as to how that uh, requirement would be recommended to the county council. And again, this would not happen without county council approval. Um, <clears throat> so that would be for private, for yes, private development. Now, Steve Miller made a comment about his HOA and I don't actually know where Mr. Miller lives, whether he lives in, let's say a single family housing unit because this is specifically identifying medium to high density residential, uh, which would not be a single family um, development. It would be something most likely townhouses and higher. So I just want to clarify a couple of those points. Okay, and um, you want to continue conversation or? Um, or I'm, I have a problem because I only can see at, at one time, a few of the people. So um, if you can see everybody, Eric, you, you've been calling on them. I think that's a good idea. So uh, Tom and Steve both have their hands up. Okay. Why don't we end with Tom and Steve and okay. try to see whether we have a, any consensus on this and then go back to the other one. Sounds good. Uh, Tom? I didn't mean to have my hand up again. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Uh, uh -huh. Steve? Steve, you're muted. Oh, you're muted. Steve, you're muted. Oh, let's see if I can unmute. Yeah, Christina, to your point, uh, yes, I live in a community that has both single family homes and townhouses. And as you know, townhouses, at least at the moment right now, have private, not public streets. Almost all the townhouse area, in fact, is private. And so that's exactly the issue is whether it be uh, roads, sidewalks, 
uh, street lights, and now potentially these electronic vehicle charging stations, those all then become property that the HOA has to maintain. And so uh, that that's exactly what I'm talking about. I don't care if it's medium or high density, an HOA picks up the cost. And then um, Walter raises hand right at the second. Yeah, thank you. So um, have we changed the language uh, in this proposal? And are we uh, discussing a modification to focus on county property or county fleets? I mean, that's that's for the conversation we had. Um, if if we so what I, what I was pre preparing to do here in a minute is kind of give two options uh, and both can be approved. Right. Uh, but one option was just simply uh, saying incentivize EV stations rather than requiring them. Um, and then another one would be basically this this as is, but for the county fleet, county owned vehicles. Well, require sounds cheaper than incentivize. Um, and then are we, for the first one, sorry to go back, did we switch that uh, to multimodal transportation improvements? Yes, we can, we, yes, absolutely. Agreed, okay. Um, okay, so is everyone in agreement that we want to switch require to incentivize? Let's say anybody disapprove that. I mean, it, do you not like I mean, it seems to me it's good to start with an incentive. If you're really trying to get somewhere, we don't even know. Well, if, I would disagree with that. I think it would be, if we want uh, to, I think it would be, I, I see the chicken and egg concept that if, um, you know, the, 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 the higher densities, the parking lots, the parking structures, uh, the library parking lots, et cetera, well, not for the public projects, but for those private projects, if there's a requirement that you got to put in a few charging stations, I think that's going to pull away uh, maybe some people's reluctance or maybe their willingness to experiment with a, with an EV. Um, but the but I don't uh, like the idea of a taxpayer uh, funded um, program to put in charging stations, but would support the county using electric charging stations uh, for their fleet. Okay, so if we want to do an I versus nay kind of thing, um, just so we can kind of hear and, and, and kind of go from there, um, who here would approve or who here would move forward with a um, a recommendation that says incentivizing rather than requiring. So, I mean, if you want, if please, if you can unmute yourself and just kind of say aye, and then we'll go to people against and we'll say nay. Aye. 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 Okay, I don't count anything. Did somebody count those ayes? Yeah, we're, we're we, we got an answer, so. Okay. All right, so the, those that don't think that that's a great idea would say nay. 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 And, and Eric, if, 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 if you don't mind if I can just clarify on the incentive, it's not necessarily a taxpayer funded incentive. You know, if, if you've got parking requirements, for example, and you know, the EV charging. So it's, it, it, it perhaps it's a, a trade or there's something it's it's so it's not something where the taxpayers are funding the EV charging it has to do with whether it's a parking requirement or something of that nature so just want to clarify that if that incentive feels like hey the taxpayers are paying for something on behalf of a developer okay that helps uh that would remove my objection so the incentive would be you know, we'll let you make your parking spaces more narrow and jam more cars on this lot if you put in five EV charging spaces. Okay. Not not specifically that, but that's a that's okay. an example. Yeah. Example. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So yeah. So again, th this recommendation it just says in, incentivize, right? So with this, we well, obviously before this is created and put into a code, there would be studies and there would be there would be information backing that incentive process. So it could be something what Michael just said, absolutely. 
Okay, does that change anybody's vote one way or another? I, can I make a comment? Sure. I kind of feel like incentivized sounds like it's more for the private sector or the public sector. I'm sorry, the private sector. Whereas it seems like if we're all more in agreement about this for fleet, for county fleet areas and that type of thing, it sounds like it, it, it I, I feel like it's contradicting. It's like two, talking about two different things. So the incentivization, the, the incentivizing is for the public, for, for the private sector, correct. But then we could have another one that says can, we're the county fleet. This is for the county fleet. This is for the county. So we could, this this one that we have proposed could, could essentially become two. One for okay. the private developers and one for the county fleet vehicles. Well, and I think, Eric, that that's kind of captured in, in the, that division between A and C, right? Like the, the, the C part of that strategy is more uh related inwards towards county county it, fleet and, and deployment and, and the a is the one we're i think discussing a little more of a appropriateness of an incentivization correct per, per code so i'm gonna say i'm gonna say to say it but i am um anything that talks about incentivizing um <laughs> I guess I'm really thinking that we want to be careful that that the county is not in the business of trying to grow electric charging stations, uh, especially where you look at the the entire, I don't know what the population of gas stations is in Maryland or in Anne Arundel County, but it's huge. And um is this intended to be the beginning of a replacement of gasoline service stations? Uh, and if that if that's what it is, then <laughs> it's it's too soon. I personally, I don't think so. I, I agree with you. I think the, back to your oil comment. I, I think we we got a long time to go before big oil's out of the picture, right? So if ever, so this is just simply to be a little more green, to be more sustainable, all, all you know that kind of stuff. Um, so this isn't this isn't a replacement. This is almost like an addition or um to help with other alternatives. Because if more and more people decide to get different type of vehicles, more and more infrastructure will be will be required. Um, one thing um. To kind of add on to that, I see some hands raising. You know, we, we've we, we've been 45 minutes in this meeting. We've only gone through two um, uh, recommendations. So I, I we need to kind of move forward one way or the other uh, here. Uh, and what we may we may we may we as staff may have to come back and and address some of these and, and represent them to you all as well. But I, I do think we need to kind of keep moving the ball as as efficient as possible here. So. Uh, yeah, these, and, are the, these are the easy ones. We're going with the easier ones. <laughs> correct. These are these are the ones that almost have consensus. Mm -hmm. So, well, can we move forward? Uh, I don't know but, where we, if we have to take another vote because. So, and what we can do, if this is okay with you, is what we can do is we can go through these, get information from the SAC, and then kind of come back. We can come back I, to I these. I think that would be very good to come back because. You know, it's hard to, when you're making changes like this to vote them up or down until you actually can see the changes and think about it. So I, so, I like that idea. Okay. Um, so then uh, I see, oh, since Amy and John have their hands up, uh, if that's okay with you, Ann, we'll kind of go through them and then we'll, we'll move on to the next one. Sure. My bad. <laughs> no, okay, John. Okay. Uh, real quick, just keep in mind that anything that we do with increased costs when we're talking about affordable housing, we are caught on the horns of a, of a dilemma. We increase costs, we're increasing costs to affordable housing. Thank you, John. Okay, can we go to the, the next one? Correct. Okay, so the next one. We have uh, prioritized new transit routes and connections uh, to, uh, to them in the communities of opportunity. Um, and what I did here as well is underneath underneath that recommendation, I added a map of the communities of opportunity from plan 2040, I believe it's page 109 or 129. Uh, John. 
I can agree with this, but the Office of Transportation has already been doing what I doing it. What I would ask is that if somebody has specific people that are lacking transit, they want transit to go from wherever they are to wherever they want to go. If you could identify, I call them impact stories, but I've gotten next to zilch from people that should have known where these people are. But where are these people? It's one of the factors, there's like five factors the Office of Transportation has looked at. And one of them is where low income people are and where uh, vehicle ownership is low. So it's being done, but I can't object to it to continue doing it. Thanks, John. Emma? Sorry, I think I'm reevaluating my understanding of what this is and supporting it as I come to that new understanding. So I'm going to lower my hand. <laughs> If there's no other comments, um, we're only a minute in to this one. So, um, Anne? Well, can we move on? Is Do we have enough consensus? We need several more people to say they're okay with this. I'm okay with it the way we've talked about it. Anybody else? That you John's okay. Else? John's okay. So then I think we should maybe do a roll call kind of just so we can hear, um, make sure we all kind of understand how you, how you go one way or the other on this. Okay. okay. I can call the names if that'd be helpful. Um, I'm just going to go with how I have them listed on the attendance. Um, so, Anne. I'm okay with this, the way it's written. Thank you. Michael. Okay. Thank you. Um, Amy. I'm okay. Thank you. Emma. Is Emma still here? I, did you not hear me? Well, I, I heard you earlier when you said you were okay with it. I'm just double checking now that I'm going through the roll call. Oh, sorry. It must have been that. I'm okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Lauren, are you still with us? I don't see her. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, Melissa? I'm okay. Kevin? I'm okay. Tom? Okay. Steve? Okay. Shayla? Okay. Walter? Okay. Holly? Okay. And John? Yes. All right. Perfect. All right. Look at that. We got it. We're heading, <laughs> they're building momentum. All right. Thank you all. So we will take that. And so the next one we have for transportation is identify a dedicated funding stream. Such as a for such as from real estate tr transfer taxes to expand and improve public transit. <coughs> Michael, I think my my one concern about this one is whether this was an increase. If it's a the tax is what it is, and we decide how much of that existing tax goes into this bucket, it's fine. But I think it. As as written, it could be interpreted to be an increase transfer taxes, which which I don't necessarily think I'd want to support. Christina. Hi, I just this is Christina Pompa with OPZ. I did attend the Region Two meeting. They have uh, one of they have the same uh, recommendation in their list, and they simply removed such as from real estate transfer taxes. So they broadened the recommendation just to give an idea what happened in, in another SAC. Thanks, Christina. Steve? Uh, you know, this sounds like we're endorsing one particular solution here. And, uh, and I personally would not necessarily recommend this one solution. So just funding streams. So if we put uh, identi identify funding stream or dedicated funding streams, plural. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, Kevin? I'm just going to second Steve's comment. So, so uh, John? I view this as a budgetary issue solely, and it's up to the county council and the budget process to decide what they're going to spend money on and where they're going to derive the revenue from. Uh, Sam Sneed will probably hate me forever for saying this, but I'm opposed to a dedicated funding source for transit. 
All right, thank you, John. Now, oh, Christina, your hand's still up, but did you have anything else you wanted to say? Sorry, let no. me find that. You're fine, no worries. Uh, Amy? If this goes back to, Christina was talking earlier about how it's actually the county council that determines that, and then it would be ranked on our priorities, and they're the ones that figure out where the funding comes from. Would it make more sense to put this in under the the part about just the funding, or I'm sorry, about the transit, increasing the transit? Let me take a step back. I'm sorry. I haven't had coffee this evening. I'm I'm a little short here. Um, I kind of feel like if we don't really have a say about the money, why would we put this in here? I think I think part of it is just to state the fact that continued funding streams will just continually help the improvements within region four and region four overall the plan will support identifying and, and finding new areas uh, and, and not not being not being content with what necessarily is already there but continuing and evaluating potentially new uh streams to help achieve certain goals transit related I would just like to say that <clears throat> public transit seems to be one of the um, underfunded parts of the government. I know how much they spend on on uh, roads and bridges and everything else. And they sometimes have put in, put a they want a fare box recovery of a certain percentage of their cost. And I don't know. They also say that they give people service who don't have any choice. So it's kind of like, you know. Um, how are they going to pay for it if they really can't afford it much at all? So I think it's worth looking at how to fund it, but I don't I don't know where it should come from, but I think it's needed. And on, on that note, I, I, I think if we simply put identify dedicated funding streams to expand improvement improve public transit, is that kind of what you're saying? Just general, kind of more broad, find these funding systems, but we don't need to do it as region four, but have the county overall find these streams to fund. The and, county and, and basically, yeah. obviously the state will have to be involved, but um, sure, I, okay. I think that would help me. Uh, Holly? Um, I'm not sure I'm going to word this correctly, but I feel like this is kind of just um asking like it's kind of an obvious question as in yes i should but i feel like there's so much underneath it that we're not going to be able to like uh, like do i if my kids were to say do you want us to get along then i would say yes but i mean what is getting along does it mean that they're hurting each other like fighting and then but they're playing so it's fun. i mean i just feel like there's so much underneath this that um, needs to be explored in order to be like, you know, it's like this happy, yes, this would be great. But I don't feel comfortable saying yes, it would be great without exploring everything else that it would impact, if that makes any sense. I don't know. I'm having trouble explaining that. So are, are you talking about your concern of what the actual funding source is and where where that money comes from and where that money goes to, the, 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 where, the, where, where the improvement money is coming from? Because I think what this is saying is the uh, have a county agency explore multiple outlets and see which funding source is is appropriate to help improve public transit. So my comment isn't actually specific to this one recommendation. I feel like all the most a lot I'll put a lot of the recommendations I saw um, felt like this felt like I was given an idea that sounds good to put my stamp on that to say, Holly Flat from Region 4, so this is okay. But then when people start exploring it and we see, you know, like how difficult it would be in all these, then I'm putting my name on something saying it's okay when, you know, if I had been given more information, I definitely would have said no. So that's where I'm having trouble because my name's going to be on it. So I don't want to say I'm okay with it without having that other information too. Does that make sense? Well, Holly, do you realize the kind of, tr of planning and studies that would have to go on to convince the county council to even look at funding like this? I mean, this this would be a, a major initiative that wouldn't, because we recommend it, 
it wouldn't go because of that. It would have to be a groundswell from other people and after lots of exploration. So I don't think we should feel like the way we vote is going to change the world um, because mm -hmm. other people are going to be changing it too. I mean, we, we're just recommending. So. I'll think about that. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, thank you, Holly. Uh, and that was the five minute, but we have John and Walter's hand up as well. Okay. So, uh, John? Just one quick, quick sentence. At the present time, Anne Arundel County transit is totally fare free. Well, that's good. That's good. Well, but about $60 a ride. That, uh, but that's currently set to end in the next year or so, correct? Of the fare free part? Yeah. I don't know about the fare free part. I thought, okay. yeah, I, I didn't know that. I, and there used to be a federal requirement that you had to have 50% local match on fair, you know, fare box recovery. That's right. That's but right. That, I don't know if that's gone away because of the pandemic or, or what, but I can research that. Uh, we, I was so can we. So you know, I mean, we appreciate. It. So I don't know if you knew something that. Yeah. So I appreciate that. Uh, and then Walter. Okay, real quickly. So identify a dedicated funding stream, and this kind of goes to what Holly was saying. To me, that's either create a new one, or um, take a something that's maybe going into the general fund at this point and earmark it. And really, that's just emphasizing the importance of what we're stating and the that we've already agreed to to prioritize this. So that that would be my concern is that the dedicated funding stream becomes revenue from a zillion red light and speed cameras. Uh, fair, uh, and I think kind of back to Ann's point is before this would ever get to be approved in front of council, a, a, a very, uh, a lot of studies would have to occur, right? And it would have to be a very in-depth kind of analysis of certain funding sources. The priorities would have to be set by the council, which ones of the recommendations are even feasible, which ones might be done now. You know, it, it's going to be a big sorting. But if we think it would be a good idea, we don't have to say we're, we can fund it. That's up to the more studies and the, and the uh, other th things people would need to know. But um, it would be nice to have more funding for public transit. Uh, so what, Anne, what we'd have to give up. I'm not sure. Okay, that's true. I'm not sure what we'd have to give up. So, go, go ahead. What did you say, Eric? Oh no. So uh, just based on the conversation we've heard with this recommendation, um, what what I've done and what staff has done here is the one that's bolded and kind of with the blue box blocks around it yep. is kind of what we've what we've heard. Uh, do you want to uh, continue with a vote on this, or do you want uh, to uh, us to come back to this at a later date? Why don't we have a vote on this? Because okay. um, if we come back to all these things, we're going to be really late and tired. So, so can you do that, uh, Jessica? Uh, can you call the roll? Yes, and I to be can. to be clear, the the recommendation that we're discussing for a roll call vote is the identify uh, sorry identify dedicated funding streams to expand and improve public transit. Should we say public transit here, John, or public transportation? We want public transit, I guess. It's buses. I think the intent is the uh, transit system. Okay. All right. And with that, uh, Anne. Uh, I would vote yes. On yep. this. Michael. Aye. Amy. Yes. Emma. Aye. Melissa. Melissa, are you with us still? Sorry, yes. Thank you. Uh, Kevin? Yes. Tom? Aye. Steve? Yes. Kayla? Yes. Walter? Yes. Holly? Okay. Stan, thank you. Um, and John? No. Okay. Uh, it is in favor of agreement. We're, most of us are in agreement. Thank you, Jesse. Um, so that we've finished four. Uh, we are in an hour in. Uh, right before we get to housing, do, Anne, do you want to continue or do, would you like to take a, take a break? Or Well, 
I mean, feel free to stand up and move around if you want to. I don't know what other kind of break or get something to drink. We can't spend much time on a break. So if you need a break, take it quickly and, and we'll just move on. Um, um, Steve rose his hand a second ago. Steve? Yeah, I'll be real quick on this. Uh, it, I, we could use many other examples, but as I took a look at the strategies that now we've uh, all agreed on for transportation, my question was, where would I put College Parkway and the major intersections and important facility study recommendations uh, under any one of these strategies? Because certainly the expansion of College Parkway was a key topic in one of our meeting discussions. And I just couldn't see where we would put, where we would align that issue under any of the strategies that, uh, that were given to us. So, yeah, so like, again, some of these, some of these are, are more broad than others. I like that's understood. So to, I guess to, if I get, if I was, correct me if I'm not addressing your, your question, but so when it comes to some of these, like the first one we talked about where we specifically called out College Parkway, um, if there's, if there's, if you or an SA, another SAC member or a member of the public, when the public review has occurs, wants to be more specific and, and, and specifically call out certain areas to, to let everybody know um, that we really want this exact, that we would like this on the Long College Parkway, then please like let us know, and we can include that into the uh, recommendation, black and white letters, right? Like we can put it in on paper. So did that? Okay. Okay. Um, Amy. Along with what you just said, so I know we've given like some of the major corridors, but one that has never been in writing, but I'm assuming it is Fort Smallwood. There's a section of Fort Smallwood that would fall in that because it hasn't been mentioned anywhere else. Is it still at that point in time, like you were just referring to, are we, is it okay to add it at that point, even though it's not written anywhere else in this? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, but one okay. thing too, one thing as well is um, to kind of keep in mind is, some of these are going to be much more specific than others, but at the same time, yeah. these are recommendations for the entire region four, right? So right. if there's an area that, that may, it may not be, it may not really be called out in a recommendation, but it's still part of region four and therefore still part of where these recommendations should be, should be um, uh, located. Okay. I just didn't know if like, when we get to that point, if having specific locations listed makes a difference when the public's looking at what we've proposed. Correct. Okay. So then, uh, Ann, if we want to move on to the first housing um, recommendation. So this housing recommendation, we we received a bunch of comments from you all, and we kind of already created two different versions, um, which are in red. Uh, so I, I can kind of give you guys a, a moment to read those. Um, just to maybe help break it up a little bit. And one thing with this is the, the OPZ proposed language is what you saw in the in the survey monkey. And these two red ones are now could potentially be two new recommendations in place of the one. Uh, just to add a bit of clarity, um, it was recommended to us in the survey that you all filled out that we could potentially pull these two sentences apart into two different strategies. So what you see on the left is just them together in one strategy. The second uh, the part on the right in red um, is the same exact strategy, the same exact language. It just has them in two, the two sentences in two separate strategies as opposed to together. Well, I hate to be maybe a skunk at the party, but um, missing middle still confuses me. And um, I've seen a drawing of what one missing middle, you know, would look like that John found, but um, it, does it mean all different types of Thank housing? God I'm not the only one. I didn't mean to butt in, but thank God I'm not the only one that's confused. <laughs> no, I, I, I think uh, really understanding this missing middle, if we don't have the same idea of what it is, it's hard to go one way or another. Yeah, I think that's a really great point. Um, I think uh, just as a little refresher for everyone, um, missing middle is uh, housing. That's typically somewhat between um, 
your single family, your duplex, and like larger scale um, uh, multifamily housing complexes. So it includes a variety of housing types uh, that could be, it could be duplexes, triplexes, quadplexes, um, your cottage courts. So those are the uh, type, if you recall from Karen McJunkin's presentation, which is like small, um, very small single family houses that are roughly one to two bedrooms that share um, a common area such as a green. It could be courtyard buildings, which are a little bit smaller than like a, a, a it's a multifamily housing type that's not quite like a high, it's not like very many stories. Um, once again, it's got that green feel because it's got a courtyard to it. Um, and this was provided back to you guys in June for the housing uh, meeting. Uh, as like a homework piece. Um, it was like kind of a, a reading that we had before at hand, and we kind of discussed it a little bit at that meeting too. Uh, just a jock in the morning. I okay. see Kevin's hand up. Oh, sorry, somebody else was saying something. Uh, I was just gonna point out, I mean, quickly, for those that maybe have concerns, I mean, the first recommendation starts out by identify challenges. So I would, I would think that, you know, if we're gonna identify the challenges of, Constructing missing middle that would, you know, that would kind of cover some of the concerns about what it is and how we would get it done. So is this, it's really just saying that single family housing or high rises are available and we're trying to do lower density or not maybe density, but lower rise um, housing. Is that looking at this picture? Is that what it is? In terms of like, yes. So the 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 term missing middle isn't just a region four coined term. So you got it perfectly right that in the States in general, uh, you can see a lot of single family housing. You can see some uh, multifamily housing. And so this is just kind of housing that fits in between. Um, so for region four, um, uh, it could, we would identify a challenge of constructing missing middle of those in-between housing types. I see Christina stand up. Okay, first I'm going to unmute myself and then I'm going to lower my hand and I'm not going to send a thumbs up. Just a couple mm -hmm. comments on missing middle. <clears throat> okay, so now they have uh, the image, I think, in a more complete fashion. In general, we talk about missing middle being everything that's in between single family detached residential up to mid-rise apartments. One of the things that I think you may wanna discuss or recommend is to evaluate. I don't know that every single type of housing in that continuum is gonna be appropriate for region four. Um, it may only be appropriate in certain areas. So I think, uh, in your second recommendation, you are identifying some areas where missing middle could go, but I also think you may want to make a recommendation about identifying the types of missing middle that would be appropriate, because I'm not sure all of it will be appropriate in all areas. And it is a very broad term because it does encompass everything from single family detached up to mid-rise apartments. Thank you, Christina. Uh, Steve? Yeah, as Walter was saying, it's tough not to go, I think it was Walter was saying that that first recommendation is exactly the kind of information that you need to move on to the second recommendation. When I saw, for instance, College Parkway, and I hate to just be looking like I'm only interested in Broadneck, but that's the most area, the area that I'm most familiar with. If I was to suddenly, if I was to approve this in the way that that's written, without having any idea as to what the potential increase in residential density would be. There's no way right now that I could support that um, because we have a trouble right now with the current zoning and understanding what our development capacity uh, is. Well, thanks, Steve. Oh, well, one thing to uh, remind everybody as well, one of, one of the, um, recommendations that had a consensus was the fact that develop and implement design guidelines to ensure missing middle forms are compatible with the surrounding uh, and existing neighborhoods. So based on some conversations you've all already had in your, in your, in your opinions and thoughts on you've already had, some of this is already 
um, been discussed. It's through the Survey Monkey, right? And again, you guys are going to be able to see all these again um, once we've uh, talked about all this to, as a group. Um, but that that some of these concerns may already have been addressed in a um, recommendation that we're not discussing tonight because that already has consensus. Uh, John, uh, when I say identify challenges, that already assumes that we will have missing middle housing. I'd rather see something like the advantages and disadvantages of constructing missing middle housing. That's the first step. And then the second one is, are we talking about increasing zoning density? My, you know, my concern, the 11 pages that, I'm sorry, I apologize for the link to that, but uh, I'm in general opposed to urbanization and higher rise development. And if we're talking about middle, missing middle, it's how many units are gonna be on an acre. Does it change R2 or R5? I would just like to say that when we were planning um, 10 years ago, or maybe now it's 12 years ago for the other plan, we were told by the planning and zoning staff that basically we were built out in Anne Arundel County and we would have infill. And we, I think we said the same, it was said the same thing uh, this time with 2040. And so that, whether we're trying to increase density all over the place because we want more housing. We've never talked about how we're gonna manage growth. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm for thinking about how we manage growth and what, what kind of growth is gonna be good for the region. So I kind of am agreeing with um, John that uh, it depends on, I wouldn't like to live, I don't know, would you like to live in that missing middle? Maybe you would. But it's so dense. So, I know so and, density right now is very popular because of the, the housing crisis. But I don't think we can say that everything has to become dense because we have other suggestions of how we can, you know, work on the housing crisis, not just get so dense. So, so Anne, we're at the five minute, but Emma and uh, Melissa have their hands up as well. So, um, Emma. Um, I mentioned this in the chat too, but I just wanted to um, say it aloud that, and I think um, Shayla has mentioned something similar. I think it's um, related to Holly's point um, that like, and it might relate also to what I was saying before about like transportation. We can, we can just start with the building blocks and prioritize those and not have to make it like the fully fledged idea. Um, so if like, cause it's like, I just, I know not everyone is like comfortable. It's clear that not everyone is comfortable with this, um, and uh, I I'm also a little bit hesitant only because I would want, as Shayla mentioned, sorry I'm rambling a little bit, um, to prioritize repurposing repurposing what we already have, and we've mentioned this in in several um, uh, previous meetings. So maybe if it, there's a possibility of having specific language that says that first we'll look at that and then you know, well, as we learn more about missing middle housing and learn more about like that as what Steve was talking about with density, um, we can continue on that process and, and advance proportionate to our knowledge. Thanks. Thanks, Emma. Uh, Melissa? Um, I just want to um, point out that I feel like there's not enough housing options here for young people. I have a son who just graduated from college, another son in high school, and I'm just thinking, where are they going to be able to live if they wanted to live in this area? It would be tough. Um, and then the other quick point I just want to make is this group, I think we need to really think about not what we want, but what people in 20 years are going to need because we're talking about putting sidewalks in that were never put in and now it's much more burdensome to do that after the fact and so for things like EV infrastructure I mean I don't know what the right answer is but I feel like it's not just what we want and need now but we need to think about what's coming down the road. That's a good point, I think. And we've heard different different scenarios or different numbers of how many residents to expect in the next um, 10 or 20 years. 
there's a philosophy of planning for the people that are here rather than trying to plan for people who aren't here. And I know that that doesn't sound very um, uh, conscious of everybody's needs, but I think I'm just concerned that density is gonna just become the latest fad like uh, urban renewal was for a while. And we're gonna make everything dense and we're gonna lose a lot of green fields. And um, I just would like to have time to think about what you're saying, never, several people saying, which of these types of housing would fit in? Which would really work well? Um, just you know, looking at all of it, it's quite different. So more time. And again, uh, kind of combining with what we've heard tonight a little bit already is uh, exploring advantage challenges and disadvantages of missing middle, as well as again uh, some of the ones we already have consensus, such as you know uh, making sure everything's compatible with the existing neighborhood, making sure things look and feel the same of these communities. Um, I think that all kind of kind of can work together to achieve um, this this uh, this goal if if that is what's moving forward. Um, I see Walter's hand up and then we can kind of maybe wrap this one up. Just real quickly to, and to follow up, uh, follow up on Melissa's point as to where are our children going to be and are we planning for the future and then to address um, and what you're saying about density, uh, clustering the houses doesn't necessarily mean that we're increasing the overall density, but I think we really need to be mindful because there's going to be growth and there's going to be change. Growth may mean more people on the peninsula, um, but it could also mean occupying different types of spaces. And I think if we don't allow for um, this missing middle possibility, that the change that we're going to have are our existing cottages are going to be turned into very, very large, very, very expensive houses. And that's the direction that we're going to go. So I think we really need to consider allowing uh, for a variety of occupancies. And because of the language that's in here and the study and the examine and existing characters, et cetera, I don't think we should really be afraid of, of exploring maybe a modification of the density that doesn't eliminate the green space. And well, you know, smart growth was trying to get that. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Smart growth was trying to get rid of the expansion, you know, covering so much green space. And I think going up is one one idea, but um, I just think this is so complicated. And I, I do think we need more types of housing than we have. Um, I don't understand, maybe one of the developers who, why don't, isn't there a market for more housing, smaller housing, cheaper housing? Wouldn't, isn't there a market for it? Where's the supply and demand? Is Michael still here? I don't know. No, no, I'm here. I'm sorry. You said your, your question, isn't there a supply at a, a it seems demand? Like a, there's a tremendous amount of younger people and older people who want to have more choices in housing. And it's so expensive in most of a lot of Anne Arundel County. Um, if, if there are that many people, where is this, you know, where the, there is a demand, doesn't the market come back with some supply? That's what I don't understand. I think if your land prices and, you know, if, if the zoning doesn't allow for certain uses and, you know, I guess builders, developers will build what they can, you know, what will be profitable um, so I think, you know, land pride, there, there could be a variety of reasons for that, but there, there's certainly a demand, I think, you know, just talking about, you know, where, where's my, my child or my, you know, going to live there, there's certainly a demand and it's, you know, just to add to the conversation, I, I think, you know, there, there's a need for mit, miss, missing middle. I, I don't think we're saying it's going to be in every neighborhood. And I, I think it's, while we're we're talking region four as a whole, it's where are the best places for it. So you know we're not it's not getting rid of single family zone. It's not going to go, you know, then I'm going to tear down the house next door and put it there, and build a small apartment. But there may be certain locations in region four. So I I, I don't necessarily have an issue with what we're talking about here. Just to one thing, I'm not sure who's got the PowerPoint. You've got challenges and dis disadvantages. Um, to me, those are the same, maybe pros and cons, I think, with the suggestion there. 
Thanks, Michael. Oh, and one thing I think Michael kind of hit on the head too, like this, this is again, a, a, an idea and a, st a study is going to have to occur before this kind of work is implemented, especially if you were, if we're encouraging the idea of identifying pros and cons and, and considering which neighborhoods this, this, this idea is going to go in. It's, it's not going to go in every single neighborhood. I think that, I think that's, that's, that's that's fair to say. I think that there are some areas that, with with if are studied and are viewed appropriately, can be determined if if these kinds of housing options are um, suitable in these areas. Um, well, I think that. Yeah, I like that answer because um, there are some cities now who are getting rid of. Well, in Annapolis, there's a group who want to get rid of uh, a lot of zoning, and uh -huh. just have open season. I, I hope it's not the historic district. I'm trying to find out if they want to get rid of zoning there, but um, Annapolis is not the only area that's getting rid of zoning. And some, I think it was um, St. Louis got rid of single family zoning. You can still have a single family, but you can't build it anymore, not new. So it's, it's kind of a fad to me, but. So sorry. Anne, uh, go ahead and whoever, John. John, yeah, just a quick, Background question: Is middle housing prohibited right now under our zoning code? Is I believe I believe certain um, yeah I believe certain uh, um, development is, is not allowed under certain zoning regulations certain zoning categories like R two and R five. I think it depends on what kind of use the the how the development is the residential how the residential development looks it may or may not be applicable in certain zoning designations. And sometimes if you have more land, you can, um, you know, have more density, like uh, zone 15 and 22, you can build apartments or I guess, I don't know about townhouses, but you can have more density if you have more land, so. I don't have any problem with the middle housing and existing zoning, but I don't wanna see the density you know, R five become R ten or R twenty. No, I, I think I, I, I that's understood, and that would you know that that's that's going to be addressed through the uh, um, the zoning and land use maps when we get to that uh, in the next month or a couple months. So that's where the the zoning changes will occur through the application process and all that stuff. Um, so, Anne. Um, what would you like to do? Would you like to move on or would you like to take a vote on, on these? Are we ready for a vote, folks? Or do you want to move on and come back? I, I'm sort of reluctant to move on and come back because we might forget what we were doing here. If I think we have to move on and come back so that we'll have more time to discuss this at a later date. Otherwise, we won't get to anything else. Okay. Can we call the roll then? Yes. Um, and, I'm going sure to... and, and look at the red, you know, look at the changes that have been made and see if that makes a difference in your vote. I'm reading it right now. So I'm going to, thanks so much, Anne. Actually, I was just gonna talk about that. I'm gonna call the first one first, identify pros and cons of constructing missing middle housing that is appropriate for region four as redevelopment and infill, including code requirements, market feasibility, and infrastructure capacity. We're gonna touch on that one first. And then after I move through our 12 attendees tonight, I'll move to the second one of implement recommendations to facilitate missing middle in certain neighborhood preservation policy areas and so on. So to be clear, I'm about to take the vote on the first one, identify pros and cons. All right. Jessica, can I make a comment before we, you call the roll on this? Because I, I, I heard a lot of um, concerns regarding increasing density, but let's, let's make it clear that the missing middle housing is in the middle because it's uh, a higher scale of the lower, but it's also a lower scale of the higher on the other side. So there's very well, uh, you know, there may very well be the, the opportunity to have certain projects that could potentially come in at a higher density instead decide because code allows it now to actually pencil, pencil it out at a lower scale. So it's not a one way uh, Missing housing doesn't go one way in the growing, but it's actually allowing something that is in the middle of the two spectrums. Uh, so th that's just to clarify that before you know, you decide if you want to, mm, mm, you know, go on with this language or, or not. So Lorenzo, I'm sorry, I'm now I'm more confused. 
will the density be increased or will R5 become a higher number? It's as simple as that to me is, you know, how many, how many units you have on a particular piece of property? Christina? Christina. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Mr. Spencer, I don't think we can say that right now. I think that we, uh, right now, the recommendation is to just study this. Um, and that's really what needs to happen because from what I'm hearing, there is no consensus on this right now. So let's see if we can even get consensus to study it and see what might be appropriate. But we're not making any recommendations right now on how any particular zoning category would be changed. Okay, well, I'm looking at, I understand, but there's two items up on the board right now. And the second one does say implement recommendations. Yeah, the second one. Except I, we're I on the first trouble. one. Yeah, right. I have trouble okay with the, with the second one. one. Let's do the first one. That's what we've been called to do. Jessica? Uh, yeah, just one more thing before I call the roll. I noticed Emma's hand went up at the end. I just want to make sure there's no further questions about the first item we're going to vote on. Okay, Emma? Did you say Emma? Well, uh, no, nothing. The hand went up, the hand went down. I was just given a minute, oh, okay. but I think it looks like we're ready to vote. Okay, so moving through, once again, we're voting on the first one, identify pros and cons and so forth. Anne. Aye. Cool. Uh, Michael. Aye. Amy. Yes. Uh, Emma. Aye. Melissa? Aye. Kevin? Aye. Tom? Aye. Steve? Steve? Couldn't hear you. Sorry, Steve, are you still with us? He's muted. Oh. <clears throat> oh, he's okay. 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 That's good. He gave, he gave us the okay sign. So. Oh, thank you. Thank you. He's on my screen. Uh, Shayla. I think she, I think we lost her. Okay. Walter. Yes. Holly. Is that a thumbs up from Holly? No. Oh, sorry. Uh, you vote no, Holly? No. And John. Yes. John's yes. Sorry, going back to Holly for one second. I think there was some uh a little echo there. I just wanted to see I recorded your vote as no. Was that correct? That's correct. Thank you. Okay. Uh based upon our voting body here, uh, we had a majority of yes on the first one. Okay. So now we're moving on to take a vote on the second part. This is the implement recommendations to facilitate missing middle in certain neighborhood preservation policy areas and so on. Um, I see we have a couple of questions before we take this vote. Yes, yeah, sorry, this is, this is why I raised my hand earlier. I when, I when I suggested earlier that we move on and come back, I didn't think it meant we were vote on I thought it was going to be like the what we had done with like the first two transportation questions where we could like reserve them for later and come back to discuss them more I don't think I'm not ready to vote on the second part of this um and I don't I'm getting the sense that a lot of others don't feel comfortable yet either I have that sense too that uh we don't I mean I think when we talk about planning and looking at pros and cons that's one thing but you start calling out Mountain Road College Parkway you know these corridors without even doing more study or more, I, I'm not comfortable with the specificity of that. So. Christina? Yeah, it's okay to vote them down. Yeah. <laughs> Shall we call the roll? Don't start with me though. I don't wanna be always- oh, Okay, then I'll, I'll start with Michael this time then. Michael. <laughs> well, number uh, two. Trying read it closely i mean i i would say i but it sounds like we the number one what we just voted on will determine if if we go to number two so we may be jumping the gun on voting number two if we before we do one before one's be completed but i i for the purpose of this okay 
Uh, Amy. I'm confused. So this one wouldn't happen unless the first one happens anyway. So if the first one moves forward and we get good information, then we would do number two. Is that is that what I'm understanding? So we're voting on number two, but which we is might make a reliable lot of, we, number we one. Might, Amy, we could make a lot of changes in what we would recommend after doing number one. And this is pretty specific about you know the corridors and preservation, neighborhood preservation. I don't know. I just don't know if we're in a position to go with that yet. So that's my concern. Okay, can and I know we're in the middle of it, and I'm sorry. I'm just based on what you said. So, as part of the process of number one, if we went down that road, it's going to lead to number two, in its in its own right. If it's would successful, that, is that correct? Yeah. I think if it's successful, then yeah, it would. Okay, so it's kind of you know number two. It it depends on what happens with number one. So, to me, it doesn't matter if it's in there or not. So I guess I'm I'm looking for my list of options to to choose here. I guess I'm I'll just stand aside because it doesn't matter to me either way. Okay. Um, continuing with the vote, then Emma. No, because I I think that this requires more discussion and, and like that's why I didn't think we should have a vote on this today, but so no. Uh, Melissa? Um, I'm gonna vote no, because it's not clear to me whose recommendations, is, are we supposed to come up with recommendations or like what are the recommendations? So I'm good, just gonna vote no. Kevin? Aye. Tom? No. Steve? No. Shayla? No. Walter? Yes. Holly? No, and I'd like to say also, I think this needed more discussion and that also <laughs> um, the provisions related to lot size requirements and all that stuff, just it doesn't sound like it would be in a positive direction. It sounds like it would be in a negative direction. Noted, thank you for your comment. Uh, John? No. All right, it looks like this one. We You've got to gotta get Anne's vote. Oh, oh, sorry. This is what sending no. me off my list. <laughs> Anne, sorry, continue. Uh, I vote no. Okay, uh, with that, it looks like uh, we did not reach a consensus uh, on this uh, either way. Um, and how would you like to, uh, would you like to table this and move on to another one then? Well, we did vote on the first one, right? So we've got that one done. Yes, that's We correct. voted on this one. So we, I think we're finished with this issue for right today. Uh, we better go to the next one. I, I, think, I think if this uh, was not successful in the vote, that it gets eliminated. Even if we I want to put the pros and cons? On the second one, implement recommendations to facil facilitate missing middle and certain neighborhood preservation policy areas. I think that comes out of the plan. Um, you, and from what I heard from your discussion, you really want to start with an initial study and more information, and that's perfectly okay. You did you did vote for the first part of this. Right, right, right. right. And yeah. then out of that will come additional information for which policy decisions can be made, not by this group, but potentially by another group or by the county council. By deleting it, do you mean that it's not going to be recorded that there was a no to this? Because I'm not comfortable with that. I think it should be reported that, you know, the SAC said no. My plan was for the meeting minutes to reflect that we took a vote on this as two separate pieces. The first piece was voted yes. The second piece was voted no. And then it's no longer a strategy, a draft recommendation for us for our region plan for the SAC. Even though we voted yes for the first part? 
The first one was a separate vote. So, I mean, that's a separate strategy that we could still be going forward with, correct? Yes, because that has consensus. That one will be. Yeah. Okay. 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 That's what I was confused about. That's okay. That's good. <clears throat> Emma, I saw your hand up, Emma. Yeah. Now I just. Okay, I'm confused now because I didn't know that it would be just taken out. That's why I said that I didn't know. I thought it was an option to do more research and and come back to it another day. It's fine for this because we have the um the first part of it, but it just I'm starting to feel like we're being told things in bits and pieces and the whole process isn't it, it's I'm I feel like I don't have the information necessary to make vote my vote as clear as possible and as informed a way as possible, but that might just be a me problem. Can we move on to the yeah, next well, strategy? So the next housing strategy that does not have consensus yet, or uh, does not have consensus according to the survey monkey results is Provide a range of attainable housing types for a variety of incomes, ages, and abilities around commercial and transit hubs along Ritchie Highway, Mountain Road, College Parkway, and similar corridors in Region 4. Consider zoning, consider zoning changes such as increasing density. Uh, what, based on comments staff has heard through the Survey Monkey from the SAC members, we have decided to remove the word attainable out of the, out of the recommendation. I just would like to say that, again, when we talk about specific roads, I know there are a lot of people in Arnold that think College Parkway is going to look like, um, you know, Ritchie Highway pretty soon. They don't want to see that. And um, uh, their Mountain Road, I don't know how folks would feel about that. It seems like premature to start talking about those corridors. I don't know. And I don't think a lot of people wouldn't want College Parkway to be a corridor. Uh, Holly? Holly, you're on mute if you're talking. I am 100% against any kind of density on Ritchie Highway. It is a nightmare as it, as it is at random times when it shouldn't be and just impossible at rush hour. There should not be any increased density along that area. Thank you, Holly. Uh, Kevin? I was just going to point out that this recommendation is pointed towards um, what transit hubs along these, you know, what are probably the major transit routes in our region. So that's probably the reason that it specifically talks about those transit routes. So it's just my only my point. It's not saying that, you know, to provide housing everywhere, it's specifying where. But there, in our area, just so you you know what I'm hearing from people, uh, Ritchie Highway, they're talking about um, expanding Ritchie Highway right now, and also College Parkway, and changing the zoning on College Parkway. At least that's what a lot of the people who live here are, are concerned about. So if you put it in there, like it's already been decided, um, I, I just don't know if that gets us anywhere since we need a lot more study, more support to do it. Uh, thanks, Anne. And uh, again, I, I this I, I don't I I think how this recommendation is written, it, it doesn't mean tomorrow <laughs> new development. You know, think multiple things have to happen, and, and studies have to occur to help understand what's most feasible um, for future uh, mm -hmm. things around transit hubs. Um, uh, Steve. Yes, um, you know, part of this is, uh, uh, to me, a little bit consistency in terminology when we're talking about potentially doing rezoning, because in some of our strategies, we talk about priority funding areas, we talk about neighborhood preservation areas, we talk also about areas of opportunity, and then in this case, we get right down to College Parkway, which falls in some of those things that I just mentioned. When you get to that specificity, specificity uh, it, it again looks to me like we're making a case for why College Parkway perhaps might need to be widened. And so that it, that may not be the intent, but that's the way I read. 
So, um, and would you be more, you personally, would you be more comfortable if we removed, um, a long Ritchie highway mountain road and college parkway and just simply said, um, around commercial and transit hubs and similar corridors in region four? I would, but, uh, you know, that, that, um, is, is up to the group. It'd be acceptable to me. Sure. Okay. It'd be acceptable to me too, because right now there's so much controversy about what's going to happen with Ritchie Highway and there are people that say it's going to look like Glen Burnie all the way down the you know 50 to 50 and people get over it it's going to be all commercial it's going to be more denser and so you know it's an issue a hot hot item right now uh John is this another way of getting to increased density that's what it looks like to me uh, at the end, it does say consider zoning change, uh, such as into such. Yeah, yeah. Increase. I mean, I'm... <laughs> it's, it's backwards. You need to have the zoning changes before you have the the housing types, right? It just looks like higher density in B, and and the initial issue is Region Four lacks diverse housing options. Excuse me, in terms of housing type styles and affordability. So, what are we missing? I, and I think th that's up for the debate, right? Like, uh, I think p some people have their opinion on the missing middle. Uh, I think some people believe uh, there may not be any types of missing, but I think this is the point of the conversation to see, to kind of hammer out these little fine tuned details to get a to get a recommendation that uh, we can move forward with, or maybe not move forward with. Well, and that is, a, that is the five minute warning actually. Um, how would you like to, would you like to come back to this, vote on this or? Well, give me, you know, somebody give me what you want to do. I, I, I need some guidance from the group. If it's too tough, we'll come back to it. But um, do we have enough information to vote or not? I mean, this is a hard no for me because it's increasing density, but that's just me. Why don't we try a vote? And if it's confusing, we will just come back to it. But maybe we can vote on this. We've heard several different points of view. Anybody object to voting now? Hearing none, let's uh, ask Jessica to call the roll. And to, okay. be, to be clear, we're going to vote on um, the proposed language revised at 1 9 meeting to provide a range of it of housing types for a variety of income, ages, and abilities around commercial and transit hubs along the sim along similar, along corridors in region four. I consider zoning changes such as increasing density. Yeah, I think if you took out the consider zoning changes, increasing density, you might have a, a win here, but um, <laughs> we'll see. So, Jessica? All right, uh, to go with our theme of changing up who's first, uh, Amy. I Emma Emma are you still with us? My my mute's not working. Um oh, I sorry. Noted, thank you. Uh Melissa. I Kevin. I Tom. I Steve. Can't hear you, Steve. Can't hear. Oh, um, I see thumbs up. Yeah. And a nod. Okay. Kayla. Aye. Walter. Yes. Holly. No. John. No. Ann. No. Michael. Aye. Well, the eyes have it. So let's move. Eric, I mean, it's almost 10 minutes till eight. So how many have we done? We have done six. <laughs> six and, out of 18. Oh my God. So we can either continue doing a couple and, um, and kind of push past the eight o'clock hour or um, again, so next, the next meeting, the 23rd, 
we're go the goal is to review the the non housing and transportation recommendations where we have sent out to you all to review right we've wow, we've, wow. Um, so pending how those look, maybe maybe they're all perfect or maybe they're all horrible and everyone hates them all to begin with, right? Uh, so if, if, if depending how those look, we can um, there may only be a handful um, to to discuss and deliberate through. And then if that's if that is the case, we can come back to these that we haven't reviewed yet. Um, alternatively, the first meeting in February, there is some time built in to wrap up some the uh, some of the. Um, the recommendation conversation. So right now there is some time built in, but it, again, I, I uh, would be cautious of the fact that again, we, we've been here for two hours and we've talked to six, right? So um, we may need an additional meeting at some point pending how the next two meetings go. Well, then we might as well try to use the rest of our time to do maybe one or two more. Okay. So for the for the next uh, for the next recommendation that all, uh, had 64 percent of the SAC members agree with, so we're right there to consensus, all, almost right there to consensus as well, was increase the multifamily land inventory within communities of opportunity, transit-oriented development policy areas, difficult development areas, critical corridor policy areas where there is existing or land or planned transit and areas with existing infrastructure to accommodate workforce and affordable housing. Uh, Emma? Yeah, so the, the language that concerned me was the, um, the increase the multifamily land inventory, because it just sounds like you would be taking, you would be getting more land. And I understand that might be one thing that we have to do, but I'm just, I just wanna, it's the same thing that multiple people have said before of focusing more on repurposing land that's already been developed, um, but is not being used to its fullest potential um, for things like this, instead of increasing the amount of land that we're taking away from the environment and the public to, um, in, to do this. And again, realistically, we're gonna have to do that anyway, but really, really want to emphasize the repurposing, repurposing what we already have. Thank you, Emma. Holly, I saw your hand was up. Yeah, um, I'm reading this and increasing multi-family land inventory within the critical corridor policy areas. Is that critical corridor? Um, does that relate to environment or why is it saying critical there? That that's the critical corridor um, policy areas as noted in Plan 2040. That's not helpful. Does it include uh, Ritchie Highway? <laughs> I'm uh, working on getting us a map to add to this page, so we'll know very shortly. Well, while Jesse pulls that up, uh, we'll come back to you, Holly. I saw Christina, your hand is up. Yes, thank you. My question is, what are the difficult development areas? <laughs> because the rest of these things are noted in our development policy areas, but we don't have anything called a difficult development area. <laughs> well, is that a typo? It is, oh, hold on, sorry, one second. I have our uh, running draft. It's a HUD. I believe it's the HUD definition. Uh, yes. Uh, it, it regards, it's about. Uh, I have a definition uh, here. Areas that qualify for uh, certain tax credits. Uh, and there, there's a map of qualified census tracts. Uh, so it is a federal. Uh, federal. Um, I wonder the word that is used for for locating CERN. Well, Jessica, you said you have a definition because I just wonder if that would include critical area, um, which I wouldn't think we'd want to call that a difficult development area, but it may be called difficult by some folks. So, um, the definition from HUD is difficult de development areas are areas with high land construction and utility costs relative to the area median income and are based on fair market rents, income limits, the 2010 census counts, 
and five-year American Community Survey. Yeah. <coughs> Christina? If we haven't defined difficult development area in plan 2040, I just want to make sure we define it in the region plan. Yes, I read that definition from a uh, running glossary that we plan to include in the region plan. Okay, thank you. Well, Holly? I don't mean to be difficult, but I disagree with some of the transit oriented areas that you guys have already identified, namely Ritchie Highway. So increasing multifamily land inventory in a place like Ritchie Highway is something that I cannot vote for. Um, and I'm sorry if I'm coming across as disagreeable. Thanks, Holly. Uh, Steve? Yes, just for clarification. Um, is multifamily land inventory a definition uh, within the code? What is actually included within that? I've never heard it, but I would bow to Christina and Eric and Jessica and Lorenzo on that one. It would basically mean that we would need more land that is zoned appropriate for multifamily housing. I mean, increase ha multifamily housing. That does say what you're saying, Christina. <clears throat> yeah, so I'm uh, obviously even an R2 area under cluster could be multifamily housing. So um, it, it's back to, again, it, it's such a broad term. Multifamily uh, is apartments, not townhouses. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Uh, John? I just wanted to, I would like to see a map, I guess, of, of the whole Region 4, but especially Pasadena, about where all these particular things are. I can see from the map that you've shown there, I can see the critical corridor. So it looks like it's the intersection of Maryland 100 and Ritchie Highway in Pasadena and along, I guess, uh, between what, uh, I'm forgetting street names, Robinson Road and uh, McKenzie in Serena Park, roughly. And not much in Arnold. I'm sorry. Could could we drill down on that map? Is that possible? We can we can try. Um, if now this is this is um, we there's websites where we can go as well. Um, is that better? A little better. Well, I, I remember looking at this map, and it has labels when you get to the proper level of detail. Oh, I see. Um. And I knew that the Crofton area, Wall Chapel Crofton, was labeled as critical, um, critical corridor. I just don't remember if that Severna Park area was. It's the same color as the Crofton area, though. Yeah, it, you're right. At least part of it is. Parts of it are. Critical corridor. Yeah. I, yeah, sure well, looks that way. Okay. There's five activities there. So what is it possible to see a map before we vote on this one of where these particular zones are in region four? Yeah, absolutely. We can uh we, we can we can we as staff can come up with uh, maybe a link or something to help uh supplement some of these that we're gonna come back to and that they, they need to be re reviewed or that we don't get to tonight. Um to kind of help you guys with the the conversation ahead of time too. That would so, be great. Why don't we right. move on, Eric, to the next one, and we'll come back to this when we have a map that helps us understand what's really going on there. Got yeah. it. Okay. So the next one we had again almost had consensus uh, was a review and modify unnecessary conditions of workforce housing. Uh, workforce housing uses that are barriers to workforce housing developers. Consider simplifying provisions for bulk regulations, density, and access to while maintaining uh, criteria for occupant income thresholds and long-term timeframes for eligibility. Well, John? Is this required in, is this in plan 2040? Is this a reiteration of 2040? 
I believe there are similar, uh, it talks about helping uh, uh, the, the, the overall process, but I think this kind of gets a little more in, into the, a little bit more specific, not much more. Yeah, and my little missive that I sent, at, thank you, Eric, for sending it out to everyone. But I was just raising the issue that if we, if these requirements are, are important, then why aren't they important for all income categories? And let's reduce the burden, re regulatory burden and processing burden on all types of housing. So this this addresses the affordability aspect of getting different affordable housing stock into the into the region. Exactly, and uh, we had the the lady that uh, I can't remember her name from the real was it real Maryland Realtors, and she said nationwide that the uh, local regulations added in the neighborhood of ninety thousand ninety thousand dollars per housing unit, and she didn't know how much it was for Anne Arundel County or the state of Maryland, but. Still, and uh, I've talked to a number of developers. I, well, three of my gym buddies are, that work out at the same time I do are uh, developers, and uh, they all lament all the process that they go through. It takes four to six years. And when it takes four to six years to go through a process, that adds a lot of money in the time that they get called back to testify or to do tweaks or whatever. It's a laborious process. It increases the cost of whether it's housing for all of us or affordable housing. It's a cost, it's an time is money. So, so I understand what you were saying. You, you would be more comfortable if this was for all types of uh, housing, not just low affordable. Yes. It seems like we, we must have a way to make things clearer and simpler for the developers um, reviewing a lot of what they go through. I know that poor staff has millions of things they've got to do. It, I just wonder um, if there could be a way to, to make it more streamlined and accessible to everybody to not just, um, I mean, the workforce housing or any subsidized housing, it, it takes, I mean, I think the woman at the, uh, community development was talking about getting one of those units a year, one of those units when we have so many people on the waiting list, so. And I think part of this recommendation addresses some of that is like, because the, there is a need for the affordability, affordable housing, right? But however, uh, there's not really a whole lot of incentives for some developers. So being able to have a more, being able to review and, uh, and understand what barriers are there during the review process and what holds times up and, and, and stuff of that nature may help provide more of that workforce and affordable housing for the community. And I think this is what that's saying is, this is where a county will, will go back and review and where there are um, things that can be modified, implement those modifications uh, uh, to help with the workforce housing uh, process. Emma? Um, I, I'm just, uh, I'm just always cautious when it's, it's not really specific if we're talking about just generally like um, changing, like simplifying provisions, things. I just want to be cautious when we do that, when we make it easier for any sort of development to happen um, and just want to be cognizant of the, what, as it is right now, I don't feel completely comfortable with this just because I think it's too general. Um, I, I just would wanna be really cautious in how we phrase things to make sure that it's being done in the most responsible way, if that makes sense. It does, and I think I think part of that's kind of it, the 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 overall um, goal of this was to kind of reflect some of that. And that's why there, it, it's to review and um, uh, consider that's why those, some of that language is in here because none like again this is you're 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 correct this is a more general more broad statement but the, it also is it's broad enough to show that studies and and re revisions need to be looked at and examined before any recommendations move forward through council or or whatever whatever um steps that looks like uh holly i wrote my comments in the chat but i wanted to point them out that I mean, the word unnecessary just baffles me. Um, and it's a huge, huge, huge red flag. Um, because what you find unnecessary, I might find completely necessary and it's not spelled out and it just terrifies me. 
Right, thank you, Holly. Uh, Christina? Well, let me just follow on what Holly said. I don't know that anybody has to be terrified right now because it's a recommendation that would go in a plan. Any of this would have to go through county council, which has a public process for vetting. I was going to suggest that you might change the wording to review and potentially modify unnecessary conditions because that makes you even more non-committal. So I, I do think that this does need to be studied. Uh, the study would determine what might happen and what staff might recommend to the county council. And then the county council would have to review it and decide whether they agreed or not. I mean, if this makes it into the plan, it still has a long road before anything happens. Thank you, Christina. Um, Emma? I know I already made a point, but like to, to Holly's point too, like, I mean, I know that this isn't like a Supreme Court decision that we're deciding here, but um, I just, uh, history tells us that it's very easy for things to spiral. And since this has um, language that talks about development specifically, um, it, I just, I think the more specific that we can make it for the county council, the less likely it is that they can finagle around it because that's just I think that's generally what happens I feel is that there's always you have your starter and then you're, it's always talked down so if we have more specifics you have to be talked down more from you know what I mean we'll get more of what we want the more specific we are thank you Emma Well, now, Eric, I'll take your advice on what to do next, because we're after eight o'clock. Do we vote on this? Do we table it to come back to with another discussion? Um, um, uh, what I think we should do, if it was up to me, I, I would come back to this. I, I, I would, um, we, we, we as staff can kind of huddle up, hear everything we would, take everything we've heard tonight, kind of reflect that into these recommendations that we've discussed and kind of provide maybe some more information um, with the, these that we haven't voted on, as well as the remaining, uh, what, 11 or so, or eight, eight or nine or so. Um, so when, when the next meeting occurs and there's time, we can maybe come back and, and, uh, uh, discuss this further but if you want to keep going we can keep going but i would i would be hesitant to vote on this one at, the, okay. at this time amy you've got your she's got her hand up doesn't she yeah amy i was just going to say even if we table this to go on if i just wanted to make sure um christina's recommendation because i like what she said kind of got put on the side notes yeah potentially yeah i think that helps much so well let's table it because um I think we all have certain attention spans and mine's getting a little bit weary. So, um, but I think this went much better than I thought because it seemed like it was such a confusing. <laughs> oh my. Well, because I thought it was, there was gonna be a lot more controversy and confusion mm -hmm. and so that's great. I think we um, take this seriously, but we're not, um, you know, being too difficult, so. Okay. Anne and Eric both. Considering how far we got tonight, should we schedule a third interim meeting that's just out there in case we need it? We absolutely can do that. Um, is there a preference of time or date that any everybody would like? I know, I know that's other that we uh, <laughs> I can add another survey if you guys want to do a survey. But I know, um, <laughs> but I, I do what I would what I would be what I would like, um, what I think would make sense is we can, if you guys complete that, re the recommendations of the, of the remainder one, the remaining ones that we sent out on Friday, and then we can evaluate the responses there. Cause if there are a lot that are on the borderline that we need to be discussed, then I think then absolutely 100% yeah. need another meeting. But if it's, if it's a pretty clear cut, cut and dry thing, then maybe we can continue this conversation and on the 23rd. So I would, I, I think we can we can schedule a meeting if you want and kind of have it be like just blocked off. That may be a good idea, but I think a lot of it's going to depend on on the the recommendations that we just sent out. Yeah, understood, and that's fine if you want want to wait. Um, I, it's just 
historically and based upon what happened tonight, I think we'll probably need one. So um, I know I know the last time we sent a survey, Monday was the preferred night um, and Monday evening was the preferred time. Uh, just quickly looking at the calendar, uh, we could do, um, uh, we, what if we tentatively put one for uh, January 30th? It's a week, it's a one week after um, our next meeting. Just, and that the focus of that meeting would be just for the, the remainder of the housing and any, any of the transportation that need to be revisited. Yeah. So if you guys I'm, want to, go ahead. I'm agreeable. Well, can we set that up as if we need it? That will be the date. Um, I'm hoping maybe we didn't have as much disagreement on transportation. Maybe these other issues will be more, um, we'll have more consensus. I will have to get Michael to take over for me that day because I'm going to be away. But we well, can also send a survey just to make sure that we're going to get a quorum, seeing it's, it's not our regular, so regularly scheduled time. Unless you guys are all surveyed out. <laughs> <laughs> that survey was really a challenge for me. Well, yeah, I think that everybody's to be congratulated. I, it seems like we all took this pretty seriously. There were lots of good comments. And um, I, I think it was a good meeting, even though it might have been a little difficult and probably difficult for the staff to keep up with all our comments. Oh, there we are. <laughs> um, so I just like to again say Happy New Year. I still am into Happy New Year because uh, it just came so quickly. I want to I want to be happy all January. So uh, <laughs> I guess that's all I have to say. And we'll we'll tentatively have that date of the January 30th or, or ask about it. But we may be so, you know, in such consensus that we wouldn't even need it. So we'll see. And on that note, please, please, please uh, submit those um, recommendation reviews as soon as possible. The sooner you guys get them completed, the sooner staff can review them and make sure uh, be prepared for our next meeting. And um, if if we can get that going and make and we can see how much time we would have that meeting, we maybe maybe the best uh, scenario. So. Uh, we'll we'll continue to be in touch, and we will we have not sent out the agenda for that meeting yet. We will we will do so very shortly, and with the Zoom meeting link on that agenda. Okay. Well, thanks everybody for your participation, and thanks for the staff and Christina for coming. And uh, I think it was productive. So, yeah. good night to everybody. Get okay. some. Put right. your feet up. Okay. Good Thank night. You all. See you soon. Good night, everybody. <laughs> all right. Bye bye. Bye.